All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Inside Fanatics Brush. It is I, your host, Matt Scott, present for yet another week of LEC. And that was, <coughs> excuse me, an absolute banger this week. Uh, a lot of surprises um, and some uh, unexpected returns, uh, notably from a G2 this time. Um, of course, as we do every week, we're going to cover Fnatic's performance and the fact that we've finally gone back to uh, number one along with uh, Rogues. So pretty good performances from, from the boys since the beginning of the season. And I think a well-deserved uh, first spot um, back to a uh, winning streak, uh, despite some close games, especially against Excel, that we'll uh, cover uh, on the Fnatic segment. Um, I'm just realizing I forgot to add our special question of the day for this week, which was, who do you think is going to clinch that sixth spot for the playoffs as we're entering what's going to be what week six this week so that's going to be that's going to be three weeks left because it's going to be two games this week two games on week seven and then the super week on week eight so not a lot left to be honest for uh those teams who are kind of in the middle bottom of the pack and are trying to finally get that spot for playoffs so we'll cover that um, and yeah, we'll go into our predictions as usual. Um, normally, and I am saying normally, I should have a guest for today uh, who will be coming, I believe, for... Whoops, I'm going a bit too far. You didn't see anything. Who will be coming for our um, question of the day and also discuss uh, Fnatic's performances. Uh, I'm just going to reach out to that person i don't know if that person's already in the chat maybe question mark um let's see let's see let's see i'm just gonna send a few dms dude Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for joining me on the podcast, by the way. And that you you saw the banger that was Fnatic versus Excel, and that you didn't lose too many hairs on that one because it was a bit crazy. Uh, there we go. Hey, uh, good timing. Uh, pause, champ. Yep. <laughs> uh, cool. Right. Let's get us started then. Let's talk about the LEC guys and look at those standings. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? That first position along with Rogue. Hi, hi, happy are we to get that, that first position, right? So as we can see, top of the standings, uh, there's us with Rogue uh, coming in in that third position uh mad lions with misfits who didn't get an insane week they, they they struggled they struggled this week to be honest uh they actually went zero and two if i'm not mistaken um first game was on friday against rogue um and the back door against astralis yes of course of course how could we forget that um uh g2 getting their 2-0 uh, and then we have that bunched up astralis vitality excel uh shalka and sk sk who won surprisingly against shalka shalka is just boosted right now so uh yeah let's let's actually start by our our top teams the the ones the ones who did the most so Surprisingly, when there's one, it doesn't go without the other. G2 and Fnatic, I think, really are the standout teams uh, for, for last week. Uh, after a, a terrible 0-4 and four start to the to sort of the mid-season, they finally get back on top. Um, obviously, you know, they, they win against Astralis, which was, was kind of expected, you know, even though... 
they struggled a bit in this sort of early game. Um, even a, even a bad G two would still beat Astralis. You, you'd hope, and uh, surprisingly, against Rogue, uh, I'm not sure like who expected. I personally had uh, voted for uh, what do you call it for um, for Rogue to, to win on, on that one uh, because Rogue looked look so consistent and, and dominant in their wins and I thought that you know, even if G2 sort of comes back they're still not at that level yet where we're expecting them to be whereas Rogue is really just trucking along trying to to set themselves as, as the top guys in the, in the league so far so um, you know dominant win against Rogue and they set themselves to uh, they're still fifth place, like alone in fifth place. Um, I don't expect them obviously to be out of playoffs, but uh, depending on the the rest of the schedule, uh, so obviously we face them uh, this week, which hopefully we, we we win. But if you look on the sort of last two weeks, they're having to face SK, which is fine for them. They're having to face Misfits. Again, oh, was it was the first game against Misfits the, the for on the first half? So maybe you know maybe they get PTSD against Misfits again. Uh, then they have Schalke left. They have Mad Lions, and they have Excel. And Excel beat them when they had the new roster. So, um, de depending on the on the level that G two shows uh going into this week um who knows what actually happens uh but uh yeah in any case uh g2 definitely looking very strong and uh very scary i think in uh, in week six so is it the the bald caps uh buff you know some some people have been mentioning this um i i remember when we had self made that uh what's his name pete Gave him a full bus cut, and uh, you know he he, he definitely uh, carried us afterwards. So uh, you know that's maybe maybe there's some truth into it. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but uh, you know, with, with that said, uh, let, let's talk about Fnatic a little bit before we you know we we jump into them. I think it was worth mentioning them in that um, you know sort of up and coming arrow because. Another 2-0 week, um, absolute bangers against Excel. I, I don't, like I want to mention it so much, like the game, but we're doing a Fnatic segment afterwards, so I don't want to like burn all my content straight away, but but I think that the biggest part is that we clinched first place along with Rogue. Uh, we, we made sure to not lose those uh, crucial games. Even against uh, Excel, who's looking absolutely amazing, and we showed great character here. So yeah, G two Fnatic, top of their game right now. Um, objective obviously for Fnatic is to stay at that first place position. Maybe along with Rogue. Obviously, Rogue has a bit of a of an easier schedule uh, going forward. Um, they're facing Schalke tomorrow and uh, Astralis on, on Saturday so uh, it, it won't be as hard for them to, to stay at that first spot. I think they got surprised by G2 who completely stopped them uh, on, on Saturday but um, yeah we I think it's more for Fnatic uh, to, to work harder there on the next few weeks as we're going to face uh, you know uh, G2, Mad Lions and Rogue um, and rematch with Misfits, I think, along the way. So our, our schedule is actually quite complicated going into the next few weeks. So uh, it's going to be a, 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 a test of character, definitely, going into there. Um, on the contrary, now, the, the teams that are not feeling so good, uh, first of all, is Misfits. Uh, Misfits, who was at the top for so long, uh, who looked rather dominant, um, you know, who managed to bring it back against G2 despite being 10k gold behind, actually managed to, to bring it back. 
and to um, surprise on the elder. So just just to grab that win, right? Just to stay at the top. Now after a zero to week, um, I believe who was it they played? Uh, so yeah, so they lost against Rogue, and they lost against Astralis. So what a banger uh, backdoor that was, right? Uh, I don't know if you, if most of you guys saw it, but that backdoor from uh, what's his name, from Maggie Felix, definitely has the 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 DNA of a former Fnatic player. To, to give it to misfits like that and uh, it was quite impressive I, I did not think it was going to work but late game Silas is absolute BS and uh, yeah that's that's kind of what happened it's just he, he 1v1s the Akali it's like which one of the two most BS champions are is going to make it out oh well it looks like uh, it looks like Silas wins on, on that one and um yeah, I guess I guess that's that's the outcome of it. So um, a double loss for for Misfits, which sees them plummet down. Well, I mean plummet. They do they do lose like two places on that one, uh, down to to third place with Mad Lions, who's you know being consistent throughout the weeks. They they're not necessarily the strongest, but they're far from being the weakest, and they I think they're they're gonna get stronger as the weeks goes on. Especially now that I believe their their quarantine is over, so uh, yeah, they'll they'll definitely be a, a team to to look out for now that they'll be playing in the same office, or they'll be actually able to play on stage now that I think about it. Um, do they play a game on stage this week? Yes, they do play against SK because so they finally get to do that. And that's it, right? Yeah. No, is it? When? No, they play two stage games. They play against Vitality. Yeah, so like... They they finally get to play on stage together. So I've, I'm expecting like a big Mud Lions coming into, into this week. Uh, not only because of strength of schedule, like SK Vitality. Definitely not the, the scariest team to go against right now but also because they get to play together. And we've seen uh, what happens when they play on stage together. Uh, they win the LEC. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what level of Mad Lions we get um, this week. Um, but, yeah, apart from that, um, Schalke. Schalke is the only uh, other team who wasn't feeling great. Not to say that they were the top of the rankings, but uh, we were expecting a bit more from them. They surprisingly lost against SK, where SK is supposed to be kind of the punching ball of the LEC. Uh, they they played really poorly, to be honest. And, uh, you know, they, they gave Gen X his listen, on which he's absolutely dominant. But Jezu had an impressive performance on his, uh, on his Tristana. Even Blue, to be honest. Like, Blue is... Uh, he hasn't had the best of seasons, you know, for for a rookie. Uh, I don't think the expectations were too high on him, but uh, I feel like he's finally showing some improvement. So, you know, uh, I don't know if SK is gonna play spoiler for the the last weeks, and maybe be the team that's gonna help, uh, you know, the top six. Uh, make it a bit more difficult for some people to, to qualify for that last playoff spot. But, um, yeah, you know, it's it's been tough. And then obviously they were facing uh, Mad Lions, who is a top team. So a zero to a week for, for Schalke. And uh, I, I think in some universe they, they were close to, to making playoffs. I think now they're just, they're just done so. Unless they... They, they have a resurgence, but, um, you know, Kire's not been impressive. Uh, definitely one of the worst uh, junglers I think we have in the LEC. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? Nuclear Int has to 1v9 most of the games. So, yeah, it's... Um, you know, maybe projecting myself a bit too much, but it'll be interesting to see who's left of of that uh, of that Schalke team when they get replaced by uh, BDS. 
uh, I doubt we see Kyrie in, uh, in the LEC uh, next season. But who knows? Who knows? You know, I'm not a general manager. I'm not the one who's making the choices here. Um, just put trees back already. I mean, <sighs> I, th I think I mention it every week is that it's very sad to see what happened to SK, right? SK was such a competitive team in spring and that single change has just like made them like a laughing st it's it's actually really really sad and i think disappointing in terms of the competitiveness that what sk could have been um again i don't understand the choices that have been made in that regard but um yeah i i don't know what again what we can expect for SK going into next season. Um, I feel bad for Treats, definitely. I hope we see him back as a support role because he, he was definitely, you know, I'd say top four supports um, in, in spring and was the driving force behind uh, SK's performance. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a bit sad. It's 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 very clunky, basically how it feels like. It's like a very clunky uh, decision from uh, from the staff, managers, whoever decided to to have that structure. Um, like SK is at what two wins right now? I don't know. It's um, it's disappointing for sure. Uh, anywho. Um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I think that's about it for our segment on the LEC. Uh, looking forward to the games this week. We'll talk a bit more, obviously, during uh, the predictions. But uh, spicy week. Spicy week. Some some surprise wins, definitely. Um, I think the ba I'm, I'm just thinking about the back door again. And a bit disappointing for Excel, to be honest. You know, Obviously, they went 0-2. They're such an amazing team. They're such an exciting team to watch as well. Like the fact that just introducing Marcun and Advien has completely flipped the dynamic of this team. Um, I I can't remember when was the last time that something like this happened, to be honest. But I'm I'm super excited for them. Um, but yeah, I think it's time for us to move on to the question of the day. And for that, I will bring on our special guest, if he's on board. Where is he? Yo. I'm going to wait for him to, to join me. Uh, but uh, yeah, the question of the day, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, who's going to clinch that sixth spot? I've had a lot of replies on the Twitters, on the Discords, on Reddit. Um, if you guys are seeing the question of the day for the first time today, feel free to leave uh, your opinion on the chat. Um, I'll, I'll read it as well. Uh, where else oh, he's here? Awesome. Let me just unmute you. There we go. Uh, hello. Hello. Awesome. I'm just going to make sure that your mic picks up. Okay, say something. Uh, sure. Perfect. Um, That's all you needed to say. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So just to make sure that I pronounce this correctly, is it Cone Julio or is it Cone Julio? Uh, Cone Julio. Cone Julio. I it's... had it right the first time. Good. Yeah, you had it right. Awesome. Nice Spanish pronunciation. Exactly. Yeah, I, I did study some Spanish back in my back in my Hades. Uh but uh yeah, thank you for jumping in on the on the podcast today. Super happy. To, I think it's the first time I have you on actually, you know, right? Yeah, it's the it's the first time and and, and I'm really happy to be here. I'm That's happy to have you on me. board. So, um Obviously, you know, we mentioned a bit of uh, what happened on the LEC the past week and the fact that we're going into the last three weeks of the playoffs. So, you know, there's a few candidates for, for that sixth spot. I think it's safe to say that top five, we're looking at Rogue, Fnatic, Mad Lions, Misfits, 
possibly, and G2. So the question is, who do you think personally is going to grab that sixth spot and why? Well, it is a tough question. Um, for starting with Misfits, I think everyone can kind of see them as the fifth place, but it's still not secured. And um, they're basically in. They're, they have seven wins and they have to beat like two more teams to get actually in with it with those uh, nine to the magic number they say that uh, nine wins normally mm -hmm. grants you playoffs yeah so it is looking really possible for them so i expect them to be fifth and that leaves them with the uh, vitality excel and and astralis so that seems like a tough race for all of them now um I wanted to start with Astralis mm. just because everyone just doubts them and, and they're not that far off from the standings. Like maybe when people think of Astralis, they think of that last of that ninth place team uh, of spring and right now they're just just um just below Vitality and that's that's really wild. But what do you think about Astralis? Um, well, like, why does everybody doubt them so much? Well, I think the reason why they doubt them is definitely because I think I think there's two main things. The first thing is definitely their their team members, right? When when the team was initially constituted, I think everyone was like, "This is a top ten team," and they placed ninth last uh, last split, right? If I'm not mistaken. And uh, we weren't expecting much from them. Like even when Maggie Felix came in, like it was a bit better, but they just weren't at the level we were expecting them at. No, they're definitely way more competitive going into this split. Um, you know, there's some games they win through stuff like backdoors, like they did against uh, Misfits, but some games where they really, you know took over the games and they're the ones who set the tempo um, now obviously you know you, you look at some players like Zanzara who has a very limited like champo and and shies away from more of the meta stuff like we've seen him more and stuff like uh, the, the the trundle for example which I mean works for him you know that's not what I'm saying but it's like you know at, at what point does does that sort of champo get stretched to and become still uh, viable so you know, right now they are joint six with Vitality, as you mentioned. They're literally one win away from G two, which I think if you if you tell anyone at the beginning of the season, right, when this team gets announced with friggin' Promise Q and and, and Nuke Duck and and the return of White Knight and you know stuff like this, people are gonna say like, what? G2 and Astralis are just going to be like one <laughs> win away from each other like how and that's the reality we live in this is not a parallel universe ladies and gentlemen this is actually the reality we live in a team that has all star players like G2 is just one win different from Astralis that has so many memers like it shouldn't be allowed to be that far in the standings but still like obviously you know, if if you look at their their past games, you know they they, they faced G two, they pretty much got crushed. You know, if if you if you can add the, the early game, which was rather close, but once they took control, it was over. Um, and then if you look at the previous weeks, for example, it's not like they they can do much against the the top teams. Like they lost against Fnatic, they lost against Rogue, uh, Misfits. They should have lost, right? It's just somehow that backdoor happened but last time they faced misfits they lost and they lost like pretty hard right like they they, they barely got anything on the map so um you know if, if i take a quick look at their their schedule coming up like they're facing fanatic tomorrow uh then they're facing rogue uh mad lions uh Schalke, which should be kind of easy on the, and on the last week they're against excel which looks amazing 
uh, SK, who are just bottom of the league, and Vitality, which I believe they beat last time they, they faced. So, you know, it's it's hard to tell because I feel like there there's a possibility they that just go like even uh throughout the the next few weeks that so that's gonna be what four four that's actually seven games so maybe they go they either go three and four or four and three which technically well so if they go three and four they might not make playoffs unless there's a tie if they go four and three they might clinch it which is pretty crazy when you think about it (laughs) So I don't know. It's um it's actually a good point that you put forward because uh, yeah, and right now they are six and there's a world where if if they manage to play spoilers on some of these teams and they beat the teams that are below them uh, currently, there's a world where Australis makes playoff. How wild is it? That would be crazy. How wild is the the ninth place team from spring, like clenching that that sixth place? And I I do think they have that strength of scale. Maybe they cannot beat the top teams such as us and Mad Lions, and the many 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 others that they have to face. But at the end, they face Excel and Vitality, as you said, and um. That does give them the strength to beat their direct opponents. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, you know, especially those. I think I think they face Vitality again, which are currently you know, uh, joint six. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's ba- basically they need to fight the people who are in their sort of uh, weight bracket, you know, and basically hope for the best for the people above so it's it's crazy when you think about it that they, they actually might make play- that there's a world where they might make playoffs it yeah. is really crazy and to to not uh, give all the spotlight to Astralis and, <laughs> and jumping more to Excel um, I think Excel is looking way more competitive than Astralis but that one win that they're down from from them is what makes me feel like the hype train might not be uh, possible mm-hmm. like that miracle sixth place deal from them is looking really really far mm, but they do have uh, this renewed hope with Marcoon for sure it's it's you know uh, it's it's kind of sad that after the 2-0 week they went 0-2 because they just happened to be against like stronger teams like the Excel Mad Lions game was super super close as well um, we were also very close like they were in our base taking down Too our close Nexus for oh, completely completely and you know while I'm happy obviously that Fnatic won um, it's kind of sad that it's at the detriment of Excel, who's, I would say, out of like the the potential, um, um, what do you call it, sixth place playoff teams, uh, is the most exciting one. Like I definitely want to see Markun and Advian, and actually this team, just just in a in a best of five, just to see what happens. Like, is it are they just looking strong because of that best of one situation? Or can they show even more strengths in a, in a best of five? And the, the, the matter of the fact is that they, they've been playing so well that, you know, Nuke Dog, who's, you know, a veteran player and has shown great qualities, I feel has a second resurgence after sort of this difficulties that he had with, um, with Astralis in the initial split. And... Um, what was it in um, in his return with uh, Excel? Like initially, he he looked okay, but it feels like he has a second wind with Advien and uh, Marcun, especially who's uh, who's pathing very aggressively, um, you know, and, and kind of chokes out enemy junglers in his in his playstyles. It feels like you, you can make a lot of mistakes when Marcun is around, and even Kreis actually has been looking 
better mm-hmm. and uh patrick has always been a solid adc i feel like he i don't know kind of kind of lost his fire when he had tori and then denik and with advian who's uh I think better mechanically, but just a, again a much more aggressive player. Uh, it unleashes Patrick a bit more. So, like the the strengths throughout the team are definitely being, uh, you know, flushed out with um, you know the the addition of of Markun and Advien. And it, it, since the first week where they've been added, Excel is just a different team. Now again, as you mentioned, you know, and rightfully so, is that their scoreline is just very low. Where if they want to reach that sort of nine win threshold to to possibly qualify for playoffs, um, they have to go through um, some difficult teams, I believe. Like tomorrow, they're facing Misfits. Even though Misfits is on like a downwards trend. They're still very strong. Like again, potentially they should have won against Astralis uh, if it weren't for that back door. Um, they have SK, so this should be a win. So we're looking at one one potentially next week. Uh, they're facing Schalke on the uh, week before last. Uh, and what else? They're facing Vitality, which I would expect them to win against. Uh, but I think it's on the last week where it gets a bit more difficult. So they're facing Astralis. Now, if Astralis doesn't do any weird shenanigans, I would favor XL currently. Um, but then they're facing Rogue and they're facing G2. Now, they have been G2, but depending on G2's like trends going forward, who knows what might happen, really. You know, they, they, they might come back in full strength again and say, you know, we're, we're not losing to anyone below us and we want to make sure we secure that top spot. Or... Either Excel continues their growth, and they're like, "Nope, we're we're here to finally qualify Excel for playoffs." Cause I don't think they ever made playoffs ever since they joined uh, the LEC. So I think that there's there's some pride to it to say, "Yo, we we came in in the middle of the season. Excel was like bottom of the rankings, and we are here to you know." clutch that uh, the last playoff space and uh and actually you know make it into a first best of five for the first time in the in the history of this team so it's uh yeah it makes for a lot of good yeah, narratives that story alone is just it's just amazing like coming in as a rookie to the lec and then just flipping the script right over and just clenching that that win that sixth place it's it's wild it's, just to imagine it for sure. I mean, I I, I would if if they actually manage to to make it to playoffs, uh, I think it's fair to consider either Markun or Advien for like rookie of the split. Obviously, I, I would want it to go to Adam because you know that would be awesome, but I wouldn't be too mad if like either Markun or Advien uh, gets uh, the the reward for that one because. It, t- it takes balls to join a team that's, <laughs> you know, basically just being completely changed, who's, who's not winning at all, and who's just become a, a massive meme at this stage and say, screw it, we're, we're going to come in. We, in, in our first week, we're going to beat G2. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to get the wins where our team didn't get them. And we're actually going to make Excel competitive for, for once. So, um, you know, d- definitely in the discussion for, for Rookie of the Split. And again, if Adam doesn't get it and they get it for, for the reason that they qualify Excel, I can't be mad. I can't be mad. They definitely deserve it. They definitely deserve it on that one. Yeah, they definitely do. And just a single win. If they were just a few mistakes away from um, winning over Math or or us yeah. last, last week. And... If they had gone one one, the players' possibilities would be totally different. Like getting just a single upset is is enough to get this hype train more and more real. So um, they're not that far off, and I think Excel is a team that now can can be the one to have this kind of wins over 
greater teams. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree on that one. I, I think, you know, I, I've put Vitality in Misfits. I because I've actually seen someone say that Misfits will be six, so I think they 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 were uh, referring to the sort of uh, Misfits curse where on the second half of the split they usually sort of crash and burn. Now they've just entered the zero two week, which is pretty bad for them, and I believe, as I've already mentioned, that it's XL Misfits going into tomorrow. So it's actually quite an interesting game that we have here. Because it's either Misfits continue their losing streak or they actually sort of push away XL further away from uh, from playoffs. And on the other side, they make sure that they stay in the sort of top four, top five position. Um, but who else do they face? They face Schalke. So I think misfits should be rather safe now the real question is that do they make it into like the upper bracket or the lower bracket of the the playoffs that's you know it's it's hard to tell because currently it's g2 and astralis or vitality in that lower bracket now i'm expecting g2 to definitely come back stronger in those last weeks um you know all, all memes aside about bald caps i think they're maybe finally finding their stride as they're going into the the last weeks and um you know who, who knows what score they actually get um coming into uh week six but you know obviously there's there's vitality in there and vitality <sighs> It's it's weird, right? Because there's some weeks where they'll be really strong yeah. and they'll be amazing, and some weeks where they just get bashed zero two during the week. And they're facing Mad Lions next week as well as uh, G two. Um, so I believe they're looking at a zero two week. I doubt Vitality at their current level is able yeah. to even I'd say challenge. Um, there's I don't know. It's for me. Like Vitality is such a weird team. I had such high expectations for them. Um, you know, uh, Shigenda has come in. I don't think he's been that crazy. Like friggin' Adam one v one him with set against a uh, uh, a Gwen, and Gwen is like supposed to be absolutely bullshit. So there's, I think there's something where he mismanaged the trade somewhere, but. Um, I don't feel like this is anything that should happen in the first place. But nonetheless, Adam, I guess, is just absolutely insane and uh, smashed Shigenda in the top lane. So I don't think that's going to fix anything for them. If you add on to that, that litter makes so many mistakes. Like, I'm actually surprised at the number of mistakes he's been doing on oh, ever since he's joined Vitality. Like, he gets punished so, so hard. Like even against us, uh, when he was playing Yon, uh, we we kind of entered it on that team fight on uh, sort of top lane at their uh, in hip turret, and then as we get back onto the map, he pushes too far from his team on the mid lane. He gets collapsed on by Bwipo and upset. He dies, and it's like, well, that's game. He literally costs his team the, the the game, and and not only this game, like on other game where he makes the weirdest rooms. He gets caught out of position and he puts himself so far behind. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's weird. I don't think Vitality is a candidate right now. I don't know what you think about it, but I've seen some people mention it, but I'm not um, convinced personally. Yeah, I'm not, com I'm not that convinced either. And you know what? Uh, Vitality right now remember reminds me of um, us in spring. Mm. Like, that streaky team that some weeks like comes and and just obliterates and the the, the teams they face and then the other week comes and it's just not there the the, the scenery is not there and I don't know it has like Vitality right now has many great players like self made and crown shot and but the the synergy is just not there and yeah even though they're six right now joined it with astralis i i can't see them as that sixth place team 
like maybe they can they will finish seventh or or that would be my prediction at least yeah i think i i think it's actually fair to say that they might just end outside like either seventh i don't think they go down to eighth but they'll probably be like just seventh uh, or maybe it comes down to like a tiebreaker or some sort, but I think they, they just might miss it because of that inconsistency. And, you know, like you mentioned, it's like they have great players, but they don't have a great team, if that makes sense. Like you mentioned synergy, and I think that's the thing. It's like, you know, we, we, we've seen what Litter is able to do on uh, the ERL stage, and he's, he's, been, he's been decent there, but... I don't think that translate well on an LEC level where we have top calibers mid laners and self made who has a bit more of a sort of selfish playstyle. I believe needs to find a way to enable litter a bit more uh, because in my opinion at least and maybe I'm wrong um, it feels like the game that Vitality won most of the time have been through Selfmade having an insane game. And I think most of the time, like, Selfmade had good, has good games. But I feel like to win, the, the Selfmade needs to absolutely pop off and then drive his team behind him. And I don't know, it, it creates sort of, like, momentum and everyone to perform properly to the point where even, like, Crownshot was, like, outplaying... Um, like Mad Lions at their tier two turret. Um, well, I mean, you know, that's 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 what he can bring out out of the players. So, you know, I I'm, I don't think this form of vitality is gonna it's gonna help make it. I think if we if we kind of sum it up, we're looking at Excel Astralis possibly to fight it for six. Um, granted that the games go the way we, we expect them to go um otherwise like i'm looking for the teams like i i doubt schalke is going to have a miracle run and even if they do like they would they would ask like kire would have to become a good jungler suddenly and um uh, unless it's, they decide to bring back gilius all of a sudden but uh, i doubt that's happening and yeah vitality I think against teams of their same sort of level in their in their standings, they potentially lose. Like I think when they face Excel, I think Excel takes it because they're a much more consistent team. And against Astralis, it can be fifty fifty because again, Astralis has shown some some great level, some great performances, and at the same time they've gone full clown fiestas. So you know they're a bit of a coin flip team, but. Right now, they're lucky that the, the the coin has fallen on wins than losses. Well, I, I say that they're five and six, but against top teams, actually, you know, against misfits and stuff like this. So, if if I okay, if if I give you the um, the choice between Excel and Astralis to be six, which one would you choose? Oh come on, man! That's a tough <laughs> <choice>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I would say Excel just because uh, this vibe that Marcoon and Admiral bring it's just it's just it's really good to see that in a team in just turning the losses around working so hard and changing so many aspects of the team to mm -hmm. to you know to get that to get those wins and it's just uh, I don't know I get that vibe that I want to see them get that sixth place in, so I might be a bit biased, but um, yeah, I think Excel can make it. Let's go with the hyper train. Yeah, I uh, I'm with you on that one. To be honest, uh, I like not only do I think Excel was actually going to clutch it out, but I really want them to clutch it out because um, I don't think in a best of five that Astralis will be that exciting or that competitive. Um, but I think Excel can definitely surprise, and I think we've yet to see what they can deliver, uh, not only in the next games, but really their full potential as they get more and more games together on stage, um, or I should say live, depending. Like, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with Excel as well. Uh, for you guys watching, 
let me know what you think you can always tweet at me on the ifb podcast twitter and say what the hell matt got it's not excel it's astralis promise q is the best support and all those crazy things uh but yeah I think that uh, that kind of sums it up for the question of the day. Uh, if you want to stay around for for the Fnatic segment, um, you know, let's uh, let's move on there. Uh, just gonna jump here. Uh, what was saying? Is it the year of the duck? I mean, I, I'm I I don't think I'm the only one to say this, but Nuke Duck, you know, has consistently been a good player he has ups and downs and lately hasn't had the greatest performances but it feels like he's revitalized in that um in that new uh what do you call it in the new uh, excel team so uh i um I, I think he can do some interesting stuff i definitely do and uh i hope we see the nuke duck of old where he was Probably the best uh, mid laner at some point. Like, he, he had an insane champ pool. So, you know, year of the duck. Year of the duck who helps Excel mix playoffs. That's what I'll say. Uh, but uh, with that said, uh, let's move on to Fnatic. And let's celebrate our first position, right? How awesome is that? Um with uh two interesting games to be honest uh first game was against uh vitality which you know if you consider the early game was a bit touch and go to be honest um we we started well then um no actually sorry it was first blood on niski then there was a few fights back and forth and we were sort of even for the longest time and then we took the good fights and we took over the game, but um, it got scary. It got scary at some point. Um, you know, we, we've had sort of highlight moments with Adam's uh, solo kill. Uh, Niski absolutely popping off. Oh my god, this guy is. <laughs> How insane is Niski? Like, seriously. How insane is Niski? I mean, Niski is finally getting the recognition he deserves. Like, right. he's been popping off silently all split and just winning those two MVP votes this this week. And I think it's great for him. Like, he deserves it so much. He's he's this unsung hero from right now. So for sure, like, he's, he's glad to see him like yeah, do so well. I agree. I did. I agree so much. It's like. His rise perform. I got a bit scared, right? Because that first blood kind of put him behind, and you're looking at a scaling champion with rise. So I was like, ah, oh, crap! He's not gonna get to his power spikes, and he managed the fight so well. He got uh, ahead. Uh, Hilly Sang played a really good Alistar as well in that Vitality game. Um, some great like three man, two man engages on there. Um, if you consider like the sort of top river fight and the um, red side red buff fight where basically they get a catch on litter in the mid lane uh, really well played with uh, Niski, uh, Hilly Sang and, and Buipo but then Adam who is already so well synergized with the team gets that team fight on the top lane manages to gain so much time and then basically helps uh, Niski, Hilly and Buipo clean up, get free kills for free and uh, just just some really good work all around. Just punishing, um, you know, Vitality overextending and uh, Litter being in a, in a wrong position, not respecting uh, Hilly roams but the fact that Buipo can traverse half the map by by clicking one button, um, and the 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 Drake fight with uh, with Niski, oh, there's there's one part where uh, Gwen tries to jump on him, he flashes behind the wall, and he EQs and he hits the Q blind. Mm, that was so good. That was so good. Like Hilly mechanically, uh, Hilly Niski mechanically 
is so impressive and he's done it on the silas he's, he's done it on the on the rise i so, it's it's so amazing to watch and on that vitality game which was so so close like i, I really got scared when the gwen got ahead and she was basically like out sustaining every trade like um so Adam Adam struggled quite a bit. He was he was being camped, and uh, you know it's the the Camille basically could not match Gwen on the side lanes. Now, in typical like Fnatic fashion, we had get one good team fight uh, around the Drake, and then we try to catch them uh, around the Drake pit again. We completely end the fight. We give them all the shutdowns in the world, and I believe we give them Baron off of that as well. And it's like, ah, oh, crap! Did we just, did we just literally give the key to Excel to beat us? Then we manage to win another big team fight, and we get the other Drake. Then we we give them Elder, and it was just like a back and forth of like, we we managed to get advantages, but we're we're being too overzealous, and we we're taking fights that we shouldn't be taking. Then Excel tries to dive us on the. Uh, second tier turret in the mid lane and upset insane but I, th I think upset as well uh needs to be talked about like his positioning with Aphelios during the vitality team fights like i i invite you guys to watch the replays of of the team fights and look at upset like vitality drafted uh, a comp that is literally kill the Aphelios. You have Diana. You have uh, Yasuo. Um, what was it? They had uh, Nautilus as well, I believe, right? And they had Tristana. My, my, do I have this correctly? Let me check. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, it was Callista, Callista and Nautilus. So literally, like, throw at you a big CC monster who can. CCU with his auto, with his Q, and with his ult. And one uh, one fresh flay is not going to protect you. So that's the thing. Like He had to position so well during those team fights where he was the main target. And Niski was this close to getting a Penta, by the way. And I think it's just as well that uh, Upset got the kill. Because the Gwen would probably would have I I think if, if Gwen kills Niski, she can take over the fight just by out sustaining with her Q and her passive. Um, one one thing I wasn't really a fan of is that they didn't build any like healing reduction, no executioners, no oblivionors. You're against the Gwen, dude. Like this champ is absolutely bullshit as it is. You cannot, like, out sustain her, especially if she's ahead. So, we got. I think we got lucky to to win that one, and that the last team fight in the mid lane, uh, ended up the way it did with Niski just smashing his uh, Zonia button, and we kind of flipped it on their heads because they just spent everything on on Niski, and Niski, the moment he comes out of Zonia's. Just jumps on Patrick with his chains over the walls. So well played. So well played. Like, I, the, the only thing I had to say after these two games, like, obviously he got MVP, but it's like, this is Niski's world, and we're just living in it right now. So I think this is a massive tribute to Niski, his performance, how well he's been playing the split. And I think it's not crazy to say that he's a top two mid laner right now i don't know what's your opinion on this but i don't think it's being too much of a fanatic fan to say that niski is at this level right now yeah it's it's not that uh it's not it's not that wild so like top two seems seems real like um i don't know maybe you can put humanoid or like as the other maybe possible best mid laner but mm -hmm. the way Niski's is playing and the way he's contributing to the team is just 
it's just there like uh he's he's massive for the team and and ever since summer season started he's he's doing it all for the team he's he's that he's that change that that we needed from from spring to summer and it's it's giving us so many wins like as you said the silas should be permanent against <laughs> it's, it's just it's just wild that the silas is it, pretty crazy just, silas is pretty crazy and, and this case silas is just way more crazy for sure and uh you know even i, I was actually pleasantly surprised the way he played the the, the rise as well because i can't remember when was the last time he played rise i'm actually trying to get some stats as we speak here uh but uh let's um, see it, it, that was his first maybe. game of rise this uh this uh summer uh, i'm gonna check in spring if he had any and, he had two while games you check, uh, maybe while you check that uh, maybe i can talk a bit about it um yeah like, sure. As you said, it was. I was kind of nervous when when Niski died and was rise in that in that vitality game. Like mm -hmm. I think he, had, he was first blood, but then uh, the team adaptability to play through him to know how to play uh, through him and giving them that that shutdown against leader mm -hmm. and and letting him um, regain like his his position in the in the game and yeah finally he he took control of it and, and that was what, what's what made it a difference in, in the vitality game for no for sure that's that's absolutely the case is that he uh he didn't let himself fall behind too much and he managed team fights so so well uh despite the sort of drawback from the from the beginning um, you know, I'm just looking at some of his champions played so far. He has a hundred percent win rate on the Silas played three times. Um, you know he has two games on both Lucian and Akali, which he won one, lost one. Uh, obviously, and then it's just like Oriana, which he lost. Zoe, he won on that. The twi when he played the Twisted Fate, and obviously the Rise game. But overall, like his stats, he's he's ahead on in everything basically. So. Uh, in the majority of his games, he's ahead in CS. Um, his CS diff is, in, on average, is plus 5.4. Uh, his gold difference at 15 is at plus 160. And his XP diff at 15 is plus 334. Uh, uh, so, you know, he's he's definitely up there. And, you know, his his gold percentage, I believe, is not necessarily like the highest I, I can maybe look at Fnatic in particular to see the gold distribution but um, I'm pretty sure that he's not the one that has uh, the most let me see show me per position uh, blah 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 gold percentage yeah he, he's actually so out of the like let's see the sort of free carry position so top mid and bot He's literally the one with the lowest uh, gold percentage at 21.1%. Adam has 21.8% and Offset has 24.4%. But that's mainly because he gets left alone and he gets all those like um, turret plates on his own. So, uh, you know, even against Vitality, he friggin' 1v1 <laughs> crying shot <laughs> under his turrets. So, like, Again, you know, obviously we talk a lot about Niski, but uh, Upset has also been like super stable for us. And it, it's crazy when you think that a lot of the team fights that are won, n there's a lot of occasions I feel like where Upset is not even there. Like he's like split pushing, like he's some sort of like Trendamir side lane or something. And uh, there the are people like, oh yeah, it's, it's 4v5. Oh, we actually win this. And Niski like fucking pops off, gets a triple quadra kill whatsoever uh, but you know if, if if we're looking at like individual stats right now so when has that been updated july 10th okay so that was updated after um the, the last games of last week currently ahead in dpm out of all mid laners niski 561 humanoid 549 um Let's see if I can find some some other juicy stats. Uh, he's what? 
yeah, C CS difference at uh, at uh, what do you call it? At ten minutes, he's in the top four with you know Larson only being zero point six uh, CS difference in on average. So that's like nothing at all. He's ahead in XP diff. Actually, joined first with Humanoid, and despite that, his gold diff, like he ha obviously because he receives less focus on the mid lane. He has just like minus 41 gold difference at 10, but he's still like, so he's able to dish out the most damage as a mid laner out of all mid laners, despite receiving less gold, which I think in terms of like value that you're talking about a, a player who doesn't necessarily get a lot of attention on his lane. Like it's not like Boipo is focusing mid 24 uh, seven, but he's able to get all of this done like damage, advanced, uh, XP difference, pretty much on his own. And I think the people who have severely underestimated him ever since he, he joined the team uh, are getting to see finally what he's, uh, he's made of. And uh, I'm really happy that despite what he was showcasing in, in Clyde 9, which was much more of like a an enabler for for blabber and he actually mentioned it on uh on an interview uh with um is it ferdinand caste or something like this that's that's the name of the interviewer he was able to um, to this time sort of say i get to be the carry now and i get to enable myself so um yeah i think niski has been one of the the great addition of of the team and uh you know while a lot of people talk about inspired being uh mvp of the of the of the split uh i think niski can definitely come into the conversation um he obviously you know he, he plays this game so he doesn't necessarily get all the flashy highlights even though there's been that insane quadra kill but i think before that people were not necessarily realizing what niski was doing and i think since pretty much last week's games um the attention is brought on to him and we might see a bit more focus on the mid lane on the upcoming games um especially against g2 who like to babysit Cass's lane like hell with uh, uh mickey and, and yankos basically sandwiching enemy mid laners every time so uh we'll see we'll see how that uh works but um yeah niski MVP for the week, back to back. What else uh, is there to say, really? Yeah, and I'm just glad he's getting rid of the, the supportive mid laner tag, and we can finally see him as who he really is, like a great player. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, maybe he doesn't take that many resources, but he's still able to carry, he's still able to get those squadras, he's still able to get those flashy plays. Um, but also, well, um, not necessarily being babysitted like Caps. Yeah, very much so. Very much. And uh, I, I, it'll, it'll definitely make for um, for an interesting game this Saturday uh, when we see the, the current level of, um, of Niski versus Caps, who's getting back into form, I feel, uh, as long with, uh, with G2. So uh, yeah, I think with that, let's uh, let's actually jump on to the the predictions. So I don't know if you've already done your predictions for uh, for next week, or I should say this week. Um, I normally do my predictions after year, so. Okay, I see. I see. Okay, well, you're you're, you're going to be able to see uh, what I've put for for this week. Um, actually, so far I'm I'm leading. Uh, after doing the the calculations, I I forgot to update last week, but uh, there were a few games where I actually got lucky, and um, for instance, where I voted Misfits over G two. Um, Thank God, Misfits got that Elder, or else we would probably be at uh, we probably be tied. I think thirty-seven for thirty-seven. So right now I'm beating the community. Uh, I just want to remind everyone who's uh, watching now or through the VOD that 
I won the predictions for Worlds 2020 with a perfect playoffs bracket. So just so you know who you're dealing with here. But um, I don't think there's really any surprise for this week. Um, did I? I think I made a mistake here. I'm, I'm going to check my actual predictions. I think I put Excel to win against Misfits. Let me have a look here. I'm not too sure. For for you personally, would you put Misfits or Excel to win uh, tomorrow? Come on, we just made a whole segment of I know, Excel I know, but uh... that seat. Oh, <laughs> we, we got a boy into that. Come on, like Excel, sure as sure as hell can can be the Misfits for sure. So, yeah, that's that's my prediction at least. Yeah. So yeah, I actually does it uh... do well. He said. I actually put Misfits, uh, I actually put, sorry, Excel in my predictions in the official Fnatic Discord one. So I'm gonna actually gonna update all of that. There we go. Boom. Let me just make sure that I'm on the right level here. Uh, oh, is that right? I'm just gonna bring it down because it's a bit flyer. There you go, I need to have it aligned properly. So I'm going with Excel. The community is going for Misfits, so I uh, I respect that. Um, but yeah, for the rest of the day, Rogue versus Schalke, I think that's pretty straightforward. Same for SK Mad Lions, unless SK managed to surprise, but Mad, Mad Lions are like solid against bottom teams, so I don't expect any surprise here unless they, they completely misplay. Fnatic Astralis, we beat them the first time. Um, I think we'll be able to, to beat them there. And something I actually wanted to mention on the Fnatic segment is that something that was quite surprising um, in regards to um, our game against Excel is that we were able to win despite a very dire situation where we were on the brink of losing, basically. Like, they were at our base, they had Elder Drake, Niski died, and who was like our main carry at that point along with upset and they managed to draw out the the dragon um, fight them when they were leaving the, the base and get a few kills and in the end win the game with a very clean uh, mid lane team fight and I spoke about it with different people from the community and for me that definitely shows a different character of Fnatic. I can almost guarantee with no bad faith that Spring Split Fnatic would have lost right here and there. Like communications would have been all over the place and maybe some players would have given up and say, fuck it, we go in, get obliterated by Elder Drake and given the win to Excel. The, fa the fact that we won, that we held tight against basically them knocking at our door and then we turned it around and we won the game. I think that showcases a different level of, of Fnatic. And I think it was an important stage uh, in our growth to contend to be the best and potentially get the LEC trophy uh, to win that game. And uh, that's why I'm like very confident going into this week. So Astralis, I don't expect them to, to lose against them. And I think G2 is going to continue being very strong and not lose against Vitality. So, I don't know, is there anything you, you, you disagree with or maybe some spicy picks you want to go for? No, I think uh, every game is like very straightforward except mm. the Misfit and Excel. That's that's one, that one's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and I just wanted to add uh, to the things you said about Fnatic right now. Um, I think Yamato said it best in his interview with... Um, this guy Fernando, I think he's mm -hmm. called. Um, like he's the coach, uh, and you know he can't um, just call a, a, a timeout and and calm the players down mm -hmm. when, when they're about to lose the game, right? So, um, doing that, doing that, um, maintaining calm during the highest pressure point in the game, and yeah. being able to succeed and win is just. A huge statement from for our team for sure for sure and uh it's uh you know it's uh, it definitely 
goes together with um, especially how their voice comes have been recently where much more you know calm and collected uh, it definitely feels like they're on the same wavelength as well so um it's um i think this again this is a testament of their the new mindset they have with this guess more or less new team new new structure of uh, of team i would say and uh if if we keep that same sort of mentality even if we have complicated games for me i think there's more hope to say oh we're, we can actually bring it back instead of saying we're actually mentally boomed and there's no way for us to sort of come back from this so yeah su super exciting uh, game that excel game and uh, even better that we actually uh, won it in the end with that said we're moving on to the second day which will have our game of the week uh, the spicy g2 versus Fnatic, but before that xl versus sk and i think xl needs to win that one to uh, get closer and closer to to that playoff spot uh misfits schalke misfits despite their complicated week still think they're a strong team they're they're definitely going to come in hungry into that next week mad versus vitality again uh, i think i think this week if vitality really goes zero two as i predict them to um it's it's a death warrant it's like there's there's no way for them to to make it back i think it'll be very hard for them to to climb uh rogue astralis again i, th I think we have very straightforward games this week and uh g2 versus Fnatic, the spicy one um i genuinely so this is not the the fan talking i definitely think we have sort of the the, the advantage on um on g2 uh now it depends what face of g2 we're gonna see because even last time when we they were struggling a little bit um they they had a very strong early game and we came back through the sheer force of team fighting and the strength of the Tarek pick now i don't think we're gonna pick Tarek again uh so i think draft again is going to become very very important here and depending on what we're able to get our hands on um how well do we play the game this time um i i don't know what to expect in terms of pick i'm they were probably going to see some gwen viego picks open because it seems that teams are letting it open because they have found some counter picks now uh so in any case, it's going to be a banger. It's going to be a very bloody game. And if Fnatic gets 2-0, then they get to stay at the top. If they lose against G2, either it's um, it's it's Fnatic just hitting a small ditch on the road, or it's just G2 really, you know, turning it around and getting that, that new strength to, to go forward. But still. I'm very confident in, in Fnatic getting there to zero week. Um, again, do you agree with those picks? Anything that you would change here? No, I completely agree. And I think um, aside from our game, obviously, mm -hmm. XL versus SK looks really um, important. It's a game that XL should win no matter what. And also Misfits versus Schalke versus Schalke. It's a game that Misfit should win uh, definitely if they want to, to make it. Yeah, for sure. And um, like again, Schalke and... has not been looking bright the past week, so it shouldn't be too much of a challenge. But, you know, from one week to another, it feels like strengths change. So sometimes it can be really hard to predict. And I've completely gotten smashed on some weeks where the small teams were actually taken over. So who knows? Who knows, yeah. And for the grand final, G2 versus Fnatic, I mean, it's really hard to not be biased, but uh, <laughs> it's coming home, you know it. It's coming home. This time it's really it's coming, coming home. home. But yeah, it's really coming home. I, I think if we if we get that second win over G2, um, it really solidifies us as the number one team. 
uh, especially as we'll get a bit more stronger teams in the next weeks like the week after i believe we face rogue and then on the last week we get mad lions and misfits so we need to get those points now to make sure that we don't falter on those last weeks so yeah some spicy games all around and uh definitely a, a saturday where we will all be tuning in but uh with that said that wraps up our predictions and that wraps up our podcast for today. So all I have to say is, first of all, thank you, Kone Julio, for jumping on and for participating. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, how, how did it feel to be on the podcast for the first time? Uh, it was a pleasure, but it was a bit uh, nerve-wracking, I have to say. Um, like... <laughs> I respect you more now <laughs> for doing this. Like it's it's a bit nerve wracking. So yeah, yeah you know well, it's it was... uh, it's always the first time you gotta go through it, and then when you come back for for the other times, it'll be much easier. You'll see. I really hope so. So thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, and and thank you for you know uh, asking to to jump in. I'm always happy to you know have people from the community. Uh, for those you know watching live or on the vods, um, always feel free to to reach out to me. There's the the Twitter at IFB Podcast. Uh, you can also hit me up on my personal uh, account, uh, Matt Scott underscore. Uh, it's right there on the screen uh if you want to uh, you know participate if there's something in particular you guys like about the lec a fanatic game and you're like i want to talk about it on the podcast hit me up and uh, i'll be happy to have you on as you can see we're just having a conversation i'm here to make you at ease as comfortable as possible and uh it's always better to have someone to talk about it than just me doing a full monologue my name is not shocks i don't know monologues but i will keep on doing the show for you guys as long as you keep watching and, and, and tuning in but uh yeah again thank you for for coming on board thank you for everyone tuning in uh enjoy the games this week fingers crossed for fanatic on monday and uh yeah see you guys always fanatic peace